Lutheran's church on this Sunday at Easter. I'm not going to do an emphasis. We don't have any, any bands today, so I'm going to do an emphasis. Um, anyway, lovely to have lovely Sunday morning. Lovely to be with you. Uh, I'm also here last week at 10 o'clock. Um, but it's lovely to be back with you. Um, hopefully, you will be able to stay for some refreshments at the end of the service. Um, notices that we will have, in addition to the notice sheet, which have the readings and notices for the week. Um, a, a little, little A5 sheet which says, Light up the world in prayer, thy kingdom come 26th of April, 5th of June. So that really starts from um, Ascension Day, which is on Thursday, this coming Thursday, um, 8 a.m. Eucharist here, uh, followed by the rockets. We always like to recent tradition set off some rockets to celebrate the ascension and then um, back again it's apparently organised a breakfast in the church house for those who would like to stay with that afterwards it's a fellowship and that begins the period between that, 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 that ascension day and Pentecost nine days which um, is an opportunity for prayer nine days nine days in novena you may have heard that word before um, maybe you have picked up one of these booklets and I can come written by uh, Justin Rabia, Archbishop of Canterbury, Reflections on the First Letter of Peter, uh, for each day of that period. And uh, also a prayer journal, journal uh, also written by the Archbishop of Canterbury, and um, asked us to um, pray specifically for five people that we know personally. They come to know and love the love of God in their lives, uh, Jesus Christ, and uh, pray for that. Um, so, we'll, we'll use that a bit of um, those words that have been delivered to you at the end of the service. Um, and then on Pentecost Sunday, we have our service at 10 o'clock, but there's also the front there one is this particular Greek Jubilee is this on the, fe the Feast of Pentecost. Um, but there we go. Um, so we're going to have our Pentecost service for the Eucharist for that Sunday, 10 o'clock, and then at 12 noon, we are having a special service to celebrate the Queen's Catholic Jubilee, a civic service that will be here in church. There will be the town choir will come and do a cry at uh, 11 45 uh, on confirmation steps. Um, and at the end of the service, the mayor is now playing his office this year. Uh, going to uh, plant a tree up on the green. And then hopefully people will bring their picnics and picnic chairs and blankets and have a picnic. Hopefully it will be dry enough for them to be up on the green. If not, we'll be in church. We've also got access to the town hall. Um, there will be some uh, games for the children. The children are, well, adults and go as well. We may have some suitable for the time. So that's on. Um, Pentecost Sunday, the 5th of June. Um, that's probably all my news at this point. Other notices on the little sheets. We are going to stand now to sing our first hymn, number 754. Thank you.
meet together in the name of the living God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom you seek to decide, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. With all. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. <coughs> we have lived by own strength and not by the power of the resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us. Almighty God, who gives all the truth of faith, have mercy upon pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all things, and keep you with life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
conviction someday, but it would be good. I just say it was that we pray that the Lord around us for crops and we may bring forth uh, the harvest and measure it again. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. God, as by his death he hath recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, starting at verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led them me around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there was sinew on them, and flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, uh, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. As Psalm this morning is number 67, and please join with us in the Verses in bold type. God be gracious unto us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad. For you will judge and the people righteously, and govern the nations of Let the 
the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
upon you, cause flesh to come upon you and cover your skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. So Ezekiel prophesies as he's come up. First, the bones come clapping together, toe bone connected to foot bone, and so forth. Then the sinews are put on, and then the flesh. But now they're really just corpses. Then God says, Prophesy to the breath. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Ezekiel prophesies to the breath, and the bodies stand up and come alive. So you may be thinking, well, what's all this about, really? What's this vision of Ezekiel really about? Remembering that Ezekiel was one of their prophets, always having visions of what the time were about. Well, Ezekiel is addressing his words to the Israelites who had been conquered by the Babylonians, carried off from their land, removed far from their place of worship, the temple of Jerusalem, which was so very important to them. And it seemed that they had lost everything. It was so bad they were even wondering if they'd lost God himself. Remember Psalm 137, made famous by Bernier, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in this strange land? As far as they were concerned, they might as well um, be a pile of old dry bones hanging around them on the ground. Things seem now hopeless. So Ezekiel's prophecy is a challenge to them. Things may be desperate, they may even be worse than desperate, but don't give up hope. Remember it is God alone who gives hope, who gives life, who breathes life into you. The power to breathe is what gives you life. When a child is first born, its first act is to breathe. Once the umbilical cord is cut from his or her mother, uh, he or she is exposed to the cold air and the baby needs to breathe. Sometimes, don't breathe straight away, the doctor and their wife may need to smack the baby in the bum or some other part. They are have to get things started, rub, rub, rub it all down. But essentially, it's a reflex action. In Hebrew, the word for breath is ruach. Ruach. And it's the same word in Hebrew that translates wind and spirit. So the same word is translated three different ways in this passage. In the opening verses, really of the book of Genesis, we find it uh, speaking of wind uh, from God sweeping over the faces of the water. Ezekiel prophesies the breath which comes from the four winds. And then at the end he prophesies, God will put my spirit within you. The truth of this is, is picked up in baptism. Not two baptisms uh, later the day. And the blessing of the water picks up this connection between the creation and our recreation in Christ. The Spirit connects not only with life, but with hope too. Look at someone who has given up hope. Their body language communicates the fact that they've given up hope. They slump. Every movement, every act is a huge, unwilling effort. Feels like they are just a collection of bones, a body, barely able to move around. Each of us, I am sure, to varying degrees, will have had times like that. We all know what it is, uh, what it's like to give up or to feel downcast, to feel dispirited. And that's where we need sometimes to go back to the basics and then refresh what life is and who gives it. And to breathe.
breathe in the Spirit. It's often useful when we pray to pray in consciousness of our breathing. Maybe using some words in Scripture to help us, perhaps some words in Ezekiel, those dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. It's kind of mantra. And those, some of you know, um, regularly come and pray. It's Edwards Chapel on the Thursday for Christian meditation at uh, uh, Jane Kelly Wells, and we uh, all perhaps at home with the, the readings, or the late after readings, as they say now. Uh, there are all kinds of words in Scripture you can use to uh, to use your breath to be reinvigorated by the Holy Spirit of God. Or perhaps the words of Jesus to the troubled and fearful disciples: Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. I will always be with you. Let your breathing be the means by which God fills you with his spirit, renews your faith and hope. And when we don't um, know how things are going to go, then we say, we say what, um, what does Ezekiel say? Your God, you know. focused around the love for the last few weeks. Love, of course, really is at the heart of the gospel. Jesus is love come down, love, God love come. And it's that that gives us the hope. Even in the midst of desperate times. And this, I'm going to show you a picture. I know you can't see it, but you can't actually really not be up there. It's a picture of a couple getting married. Their, their army of kings. And um, the, it's interesting that the, the marriages have increased in Ukraine over recent months. More marriages recently. Because it's a statement of hope, because of love, in the midst of uh, all the terrors that are going on, it's just unbelievably awful. And then we've got, we've got refugees coming in to Khan and elsewhere. And Families that are, that are taken in and they've had to leave their homes. It's like the Israelites had to go away from their homes. And I'm no doubt that they're downcast and some of them spirited, but it's amazing the courage that they have. And still, by getting married, you are showing such hope because you are showing such love. Thank you. 
Please walk beside me this day. Clear the heavy air with the lightness of your presence. Guide my hands, steady my heart, that I may give comfort when I cannot give hope, that I may give relief when I do not have a cure, and that I may radiate your healing peace when the limits of science, time, and the human body overwhelm us all. Lord, as we come to you in prayer, make each of us conscious of your nearness. Open our ears that we may hear you. Enter our hearts that we may know you. May we always be aware of your greatness, and yet you are always ready to hear the prayers of your people. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring our requests to you. Please look after all the people in your church and throughout the world, especially those who live in areas where it's hard to be a Christian. Bless the work of St. Mary's and her ministers and their families. We give thanks for their constant dedication in helping others to find you. Lord, help us to be wise wardens of our church and the inheritance we share. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, when we feel weak and uncertain, reassure us that we are held in your love. And when we feel confident and strong, challenge us with the work that needs to be done to further your kingdom here and now. Lord, in your mercy, increase in us a sense of community that binds us together. Please care for our town and for this congregation and for the people who make every day special. Lord, you called us to love our neighbours. Guide us then to those this day, this week, who need encouragement, need a friendly face to pop round, and need to know that someone cares for them. Help us to be your body, your mouth, your hands, for those in need. We pray for Ukraine, God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort will draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war, for peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the leaders of our country and the world that they may be guided in the ways of justice and peace. Give them strength for their tasks, patience and understanding, and most of all, the wisdom to do what is best for the people they serve. We pray also for our Queen Elizabeth, that she may continue in her health and to lead us and be such an inspiration to us. We thank you for her love for you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, whose Son Jesus Christ understood people's fear and pain, we pray for all who are suffering in mind, body and spirit the homeless, the unemployed, and those suffering from addictions, and anyone in, kind, in any kind of distress. And today we pray for Gordon Crook, Jennifer Felton, Fenton, Alex Grendel, Cheryl Heaton, John Keller, Hector Monroe, Jeff Morris, Nicola Whitley, Henry Wynne, Phil Wren, Thomas, Christ Thomas Christopher Connor Curtis, and Steve Ferris. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of their family who have died and whose anniversary we recall. 
Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. And today we remember <coughs> Reverend Jim Scott, Christine Edwards, Maureen Hart, and all those who have died during the pandemic and in Russia, in the Russia invasion of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. A little while with Jesus, oh how it soothes the soul and gathers all the threads of life into a perfect whole. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. share a piece you can both of us who are here and those of us who are here but are not my virtue is the word the most maybe of you would be worshipping with us at a later time. stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
rain drops scattered in the fields and the great swamps dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So in all be your whole church, soon to gather together for the cause of the earth into your kingdom. Very we offer to God all of his gifts, the gifts of money that we give, and our offer and of our time and effort, energy uh, for this kind of this church. There are all sorts of other ways of life. God of life, Savior of the poor, receive with these gifts gratitude for your gifts, penitence for our time, and dedication to your service. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Would you like to give thanks and praise? You are worthy of our thanks and praise, O God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth, you have spoken your word. And all things come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your dear life. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets the law of your reign of justice, mercy. As we watch with the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, and of all praise and sing. In 
the same way our disciples who took the cup and gave it thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of them. This is my blood of the covenant which is shed for you and for them for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you can.
Son of Jesus Christ, give the water of eternal life. May we thirst in him, the spring of life and source of goodness. Through him, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Say again, the Almighty God, we thank you for giving us the body and blood of the Son of Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies. Be a living sacrifice. Set us out in the power of the Spirit, and then we put it in your place and put it in your heart. So we start to sing with our final game number six, seven, and eight.
using the shift from the model. You should have a view like you would have words for responses. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, as we worship you in majesty, make us ready. As we long for your refreshment, as we long for your review, as we long for your equipment, as we long for your power. Thank you.